Hi right, guys, Hatch Kramick again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. The full CDL schedule for the new season was revealed yesterday and lots of reaction to it, as you might expect more so on the negative side. Shotzi says it's insane. There's only four majors this year compared to what we had previously. Scump even goes as far to say that it's insulting after the massive break that we've had to launch a season such as this. Scum would like to see changes going forwards. Will that even happen? Could next year be even worse? Could there be some serious changes to this though over the coming weeks? Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, Attach has signed his contract for the new season. We believe he's going to the Las Vegas Legion with Standy, Nero and Purge rounding out that team. Wonder what the future is for Attach. I, I don't hate that team. I think it's actually pretty all right. I think I prefer the Carolina one of the teams that are being formed down there. But in general, the roster building hasn't been atrocious right at the bottom of the league, I would say. But we'll see over time because to be fair, a lot of seasons we look at the rosters and think oh they look okay and then you look back on them in two months and you think yeah why did we ever think that was going to work this one though I think it could be okay the question I have about attach is when is going to be it for attach because I know it was probably a year and a half ago now he said that he's got two or three seasons left in him and um you know we're getting to that point of where attach might be thinking such as clay and such as others about maybe calling it a day We'll see. I mean, Vegas tends to be the destination for players they go to before their career might be at an end. Clayster has made it out of there alive and has gone to the Carolina team now. Of course, Kismet in the very early days on Paris Legion succeeded, but he didn't really succeed. He was off Paris, stuck in challenges for years, finally made his way back to the Pro League and now won champs with New York. And I would expect Donny Temp to get back into the league at some point, despite the fact that he's now in challenges. But yeah, I do wonder because once you go to Legion, it's very rare that you go to a better team afterwards. So yeah, maybe this is Attach's only option. I guess it makes sense. And to be fair, I would have expected Attach to Los Angeles Grillers to be an option. But the problem is that LAG, we just don't know what they're doing. I've heard a couple of names linked to that team. So I think they're going to do something I don't know who's going to put it together. They're obviously going to be as last minute as possible. And, um, well, Attach was kind of joking around here, right, about, oh, yeah, another host on the flag. That's the contract that he signed. Doubtful, I think it's probably more so to do with his new team because this sounds about the right time that Vegas would get their players signed. You know what I mean? Here we are one week exactly before the game launches. That's about when Vegas are going to try and lock in those deals so they don't have to pay the players through the massive off season. I get it, right? I mean, if there's any org that's as close to profitability as possible, Optic may be a bit of an outlier just because, you know, the content, the partnerships, the sponsorships, all this type of stuff, they do well, I'm sure. But, um, you know, from a CDL team perspective, Vegas are the close to breaking even because they lose the least money. And this is one of the reasons why. Now, this is the schedule this season. If we saw this yesterday, Crone thankfully now has access again to the Intel CDL account. I think he got locked out of it. 2FA was causing him a problem, but he's back in. So love to see that. These are the key highlights that we looked at yesterday. When it begins, what the majors are. The third game mode being Control. I know that Scump actually reacted to this and said, oh, it's kind of a shame that Control's the third mode. Why, you know, did the pros not get flown out to test CTF? It's like... Yeah, that was wishful thinking, right, that the pros are going to get flown out to test the CTF game mode. That actually wasn't even in the game because they did go to wherever we was in California, right? Clay was there, a couple of others were there to play the game early. But um, yeah, usually, I don't know how much of that feedback they ever take on board. And I'm pretty sure there was no capture the flag in that build, which is a concern because these maps, the way they're designed, were not designed for hard points. They weren't designed for control. They were designed at least in part with some of the old school game modes in mind, such as Capture the Flag. Lots of the maps have like bases, you know, where the flag would be located. But um, yeah, CTF isn't going to be in the game. Bit of a concern on that one for sure. Land points are worth more, but not much more. We'll see in a second. Just some early schedules here to look at if you guys um, are fans of Boston. This is their major one run. They play seven games, if you guys didn't hear the news on that. There's seven qualifiers this year to make up for one less land, effectively. But um, it does mean that online is arguably more important than ever. But yeah, Phase Surge, Thieves, Ultra, Los Angeles, Grillers, Miami, Heretics, and then New York. So I think every selection of seven is going to be... There's going to be some challenging games. There's going to be some easier games. And then, of course, they're hosting the major. This is Optic Selection. They played New York first, which is pretty exciting, just because, you know, Pred and Civ, they went their own separate ways. 
each one of them is going to want to prove that they made the right call. And of course, facing the world champions to start out the season is not a bad way to start. Rocker, Surge, Ravens, Vegas, Heretics phase. That's, um, you know, one of the easier runs you're probably going to be looking for, really, because in here you've got... I mean, all of these teams, Rocker, Surge, Ravens, Vegas, Heretics, could plausibly be in the bottom four. So, you know, I think Optic have a pretty decent run first round, but then they play phase last match. So I think they only play phase twice all season on like qualifiers. More than likely, they will play at majors. So that's probably fine. But only two Optic phase matches all season in qualifiers. You know, it is what it is. Now, you guys might have been wondering, given the fact that there's now four weekends, if not five weekends of qualifiers before some of the majors, how are they going to structure these weekends? Turns out, I think some weekends are going to be like three matches, four matches, four matches. Actually, I think Easy Mac breaks it down here and says that, yeah, so six of the weekends are two Friday games, three Saturday, three Sunday. And then four of the weekends are going to be three, four, three. Four of the weekends are going to be three, four, four bit complicated and to be honest it's a bit tricky for fans because usually the last couple of years it's been well you know there's going to be exactly this amount of games on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday and at these times but um, now two matches Friday I think we had this back in Carl War and it was so dead especially when the match Friday matches were terrible I'm like what am I going to talk about in tonight's video with two completely dead Friday games thankfully it seems these weekends are only right at the start of the stage so it should kick up a little bit more over time but yeah this obviously paints the picture of it being a bit more spread out than it was before and maybe arguably should be. Now, there are going to be 254 matches this year. So over the last few years, let's look at Carl War had 242, Vanguard only 192, last year had 264, this year's rather similar at 254. So, okay, one less major, but with more online, it works out to be a pretty similar number of matches on the whole. But this is the crazy stat that, um, well, it's not crazy. I told you guys about this yesterday, but I didn't know the precise numbers because... Well, I guess I could have calculated it, but I thought I'd get something wrong. CDL Metrics, though, does the analysis and it says what I discussed yesterday for you guys, that the percentage of points coming from LAN, coming from majors... Is actually very similar. Last year it was 40%. This is because there were 65 points for a land victory, but only 50 points from the qualifiers because there was only five. This year it's 100 points for a land win and therefore it trickles down from there. But still, 10 points per qualifier, 70 points for online qualifiers. So the percentage of land points goes from 40% to 43%, 43.5%, which is pretty negligible like are you really gonna notice that necessarily probably not and as Donnie Temp says you know can't believe it and like, I get it especially from Temp's perspective last year he was on Vegas they struggled a bit more online generally okay they probably weren't as good on LAN as they should have been but sometimes they did okay and realistically LAN is where it should matter but the percentage difference is actually not all that dissimilar now there was another change noticed here by the flank guys for the tiebreaker rules which in the last couple of seasons there have been some tiebreaker games when two teams are tied in terms of win-loss, look at the head-to-head -head win matches, the win percentage, the game win percentage, match win percentage, etc, etc. And even it is possible on the strength of schedule for it to be the same as well. Now, with seven qualifiers, not five, and all, only four sets of qualifiers anyway, it's actually probably quite unlikely that we're going to see another tiebreaker match be required. But it is possible. And if it is possible, there will be a tiebreaker match played for a tie for first, second, third, or the eighth seeds. And um, for the fourth, ninth, tenth, or eleventh seeds, they will simply do a coin flip because I guess they think those seeds don't especially matter, so they won't even bother with a tiebreaker match. But the third option is kind of interesting, that if it's a tie in the qualifier stages for fifth, sixth, or seventh, then they will effectively, the top teams that qualified first, second, third will just choose who they play. So the first seed will decide who they play out of those options, which is actually pretty, you know, it's a decent idea, I think. It just, again, I don't expect there'll be tiebreaker games because seven qualifiers, it's much more likely in that circumstance that head-to-head -head map win, game win, strength of schedule will decide it before you get to a tiebreaker situation. But um, nonetheless, it's an interesting change and it's one that aches actually proposed quite a while ago and has now been implemented. Now, the Opta guys gave their thoughts on this. To be fair, this podcast was done after the recent rumours that were then confirmed yesterday and Shotzi was just mind-blown that there's as few events as there are. Scumba as well said it's straight up insulting. He also went on to talk about the fact that playing one match on a weekend on plenty of weekends because the qualifiers are now more spread out is just straight up worse for the players. So, like, 
for instance, so like this weekend, so so major two, we play once here, once in the first week, twice in the second week, once in the third week, twice again in the fourth week, and then I'm assuming once. So that's what I don't understand as well. So there's more weekends, but like I, I feel like for the players, this is so f shitty, dude. Like now instead of playing, like instead of playing back then, you got what two? You got two weekends of two matches, one weekend of one match. Now you get multiple weekends of one match. Like that just, f dude. Like the weeks where you have one match, like that shit sucks. You're practicing all week, and you get to play one best of five for a whole week of practice? That shit just... Confirmed. Nah, yo, listen, dude. Do they need help funding shit? Is that what they need, dude? Because what is the reasoning why we only have four majors? What do you think we should have? 100%. Six, seven, dude. Okay. Six, seven. Damn. I was thinking five majors and a pro-am to kick the year off. I don't know how you would even do that shit. I ain't gonna lie, but... Yo, four? That is insane. I mean, four's it, feels like, right. it feels like everything's just January, kind of Bro, in... January, and then we don't have another one until March. If I, if I'm doing my months right, January. Well, you, one, have qualify <laughs> you have qualifiers, though. March, <laughs> May. Okay. But, but, I, I just think with the, the break that we just had to endure as a community, for them to only have four majors is kind of insulting, in my opinion. It is. I think, I think there should be more... More if, if the break's gonna be that long, then there needs to be more before the break. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's four majors. That's just, I mean, teams could hypothetically play five matches, four matches on land this year. Bro, it's just frustrating as like a competitor. <laughs> if you go to losers spin. and lose all four, mm. you could play four matches this year as a team. Go nah, it's just like, dude. I mean, you you've been a part of it, bro. The amount of time, the amount of hours that we play. To only get four majors is insane. And then you go to the major and you have maybe two matches in one day. It's a pretty strong word from Scump, to be honest, but I totally get it, right? Like, as a fan of the scene, the, the last event that we had was in the middle of June. And here we are in November looking at a season where there's less action. And okay, it finishes marginally later in July. But again, next year's game is going to come out in November. The offseason is still going to be pretty mega. I mean, back in the day, the game would start, you know, the matches would starting right at the early December they'd run through to the middle if not the end of August you'd have pretty much two months off that's where Rostermania would happen the game would drop bang you go again like we had the formula you know it's not hidden in some secret scroll that Indiana Jones is going to have to recover to find the secret uh, you know making COD good again like we know what it is we've done it before and it's not rocket science but um it's something that the CDL for various reasons simply can't get right. And we've given them lots of leeway, right? And I'm sure that Daniel Sy and those guys are trying their best with what they've been given. But unfortunately, they, you know, Activision, it's quite clear, they don't care about trying to grow the league at the moment. It's simply about limiting the damage until we get to a point where Microsoft changed their mind of what they're going to do. What that looks like, I don't know. But um, next year, it's probably going to be a very different story. And if it is a similar story in terms of the way the CDL presently exists, it's probably going to be a very similar structure in terms of the amount of majors we have. Even Hex went on to say in that podcast episode that Optic had said before they would do multiple majors. I mean, imagine there was like a kickoff pro-am event at the Esports Stadium Arlington, and then Optic got their own major later in the year. They would do that. They could make that work. But for whatever reason, no Optic Major this year. I'm pretty sure that's because Champs is going to be in Texas. That is, you know, the present rumor that's going around. So I guess stay tuned for that one. But yeah, no doubt it is pretty remarkable how few events there are going to be this season. Scump's not happy about it. And he's not even a player anymore. But I also get his point of view on... You grind five, six days a week playing all sorts of scrims to play one game at a weekend. The players never liked the one game weekends. It was three weekends of qualifiers, five matches per team. So one weekend they play once, two weekends they play twice. Now with seven games over four weeks, you play it twice on three weekends and once on one weekend. But seven games over five weeks, you play, what, once on three weekends and twice on two weekends? So three of those five weekends, you're playing one time, which is like... 
it's not really good for the fans that want to follow their team, but it's certainly not good for the players that want to play more COD. And it's not like, you know, it's not this is regular sports. They don't need the recovery time. You know, they can play multiple games in a day. But um, that is not the format that we have gone for. So no doubt frustrating. I will just quickly say here from Daniel Sai, he does say that they're still pinning down details on challenges, but shortly after game launch, they will have something to share. But to be fair, shortly after game launch is when usually the challenges cups and stuff actually begin. So stay tuned for that. Pritt also gave his thoughts as well on um, the fact that, yeah, well, there's only four majors, so it would be nice if there was a major five somewhere. The reality is probably nothing is going to change here. And it could happen if someone was willing to put up the money, but um, the reality is that's not Activision at the moment. They are simply biding their time until Microsoft shut down the league or whatever comes afterwards. But very much a treat to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.